Alright guys, this is Rage here and this is another tutorial on how to edit. This week it's going to be how to work in how I work in between Vegas and Adobe After Effects. And this was the highest thumbed up comment for a tutorial request on last week's tutorial. So, here we go. I'm also going to chuck in at the end some effects to make the shots look nicer, like flashes, screen pumps, etc. Because just working between Vegas and After Effects is a bit easy and simple, so I'll make the tutorial a bit longer by adding something else. So I'm just going to get straight into Vegas, I've got a random song, I'm going to get a random clip, and I'm just going to sync, just do a simple sync, sync to the shot like I did in last week's tutorial. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out, because I'm, I'm not going to explain it now, I'm just going to do it, do it quickly. I'll just get anything that I want. Obviously once you're in Vegas, properties, retain, check the table example. And I'm just going to quickly find a place to sync it now. I'll pause it and I'll be back when I've synced it. Right, so I'm back at I've basically synced it, just basically showing you what I did in last week's tutorial, so it's nothing advanced, no twixt or anything, it's just simple Sony Vegas syncing that I've done. Right, now I'm gonna show you how to transfer that over into After Effects. So what you do is you see here above the numbers, the timeline, you can click and drag. What you do is you click and drag it and highlight the whole part that you want to go into Vegas into After Effects, sorry. So here I've highlighted that. And then make sure you've got this on best, full, file, render as, and then save it somewhere with your render settings, which is usually MP4 to best, so main concept AVC, AAC, MP4. I've already got a preset, so I'm just gonna save it as anything random. Save it to the location you wanna save it, and then let it render. Just let that quickly render. Right, there we go, it's now rendered, so you go over into After Effects, I've already got it open, this is CS5 or CS4, I don't know, it's some shitty portable version, so that I can carry around in a memory stick or something, so it's not the full version, well it is the full version, but it's not the main version, but it still works like everything else, so anyway, you go to File, Import, File, and then file, find where you saved it, so I saved it here, Import it like that, and it'll appear here in your project brief. So what you do now is you click it, and you drag it into this button here, which means new composition. And that means dragging the clip into that button means that that composition will have all the same settings as your clip. So it'll have the same aspect ratio, the what, one two eighty by seven twenty, the same frame rate, the same length, everything. So now we've got it in there. I'm just going to do some basic stuff that I do in After Effects. So I'm just going to click layer, new adjustment layer or control alt y for a shortcut and then I'm just going to add a quick colour correction just a quick one come on obviously this tutorial is about how to change between programs not, to ha not how to make a colour correction or anything so I won't go too into de too much detail into that. I'm gonna go this one. And I'm just gonna add a few quick random effects that you can do. I usually have this on quarter, so it's a lot easier to scan through and it won't be laggy. So another thing I do in After Effects is I go on the adjustment layer, you click Effect, R Revision Plugins, RSMB3, and this is just real smart motion blur which makes the clips look a lot nicer. And another random thing I do, like I said this isn't a tutorial about how to add effects, I'm just showing some random effects. I'm not actually going in depth on the effects, I'm just showing some things you can do in After Effects and things that I do do. Right, layer, new solid, make it any colour, effect, video copilot, optical flares. No, oh, come on. If I've got options up here, I'm just going to choose a random flare. I usually go for this one because it's got a rainbow thing on it. Okay, and then down here, if it's got these icons, like round here, you click F4 to switch it to these ones. And then you change the blend mode, add, drop below the color correction, and then. I'm just going to uh, 
keyframe it to uh, to like appear at the last shot. So I'm gonna move it up here. Keyframe the brightness from a hundred and to zero. Zero. Just gonna turn the flicker up a tiny bit. Right now that's done. That's we've done what we want to do in After Effects. I'm just going to render it back into Sony Vegas and show you how to add flashes and stuff. So once you've got this, like this, all this, you put the back, put it back on full. You go to composition, add to the render queue, and when it's in your render queue, if you've already got a preset, you click this little arrow here and choose your preset. I use WMV simply because my portable version of After Effects doesn't have MP4 with it. So if you do have H.264 as an option, choose that and then choose your best render settings. But I've got WMV and then output 2 you click on the name and just put it anywhere I'm just going to call it test and I'll be back when it's rendered and I'll see you back in Vegas alright so there we go it's done now so now it's rendered After Effects we're going to go back into Vegas we're going to grab all the all the video layers just the video layers Right, you click on the first one, click on the M1 holding down shift, so it's like little, and then click U, and then click delete, so it deletes just the video. And then you're going to go to a, in your explorer or in your folder, wherever you save the clip, and just find it. Click this refresh button if it's not there yet. Come on. Oh, great. Give me a second. There we go. And you gra grab it and drag it in. Like this. And it'll have some audio on it as well. So you just like, you know, the the clip perfectly matches up with the audio. So you can just drag it away. Click U to split the audio and video. Delete the audio that's attached attached to the new rendered video, and then just drag it back in line with the original audio. If that makes sense. So I'm just gonna make a quick preview of that. See what it looks like. Right, so now I'm going to quickly show you how to add some screen flashes, some flashes, screen pumps, anything to make the shots more interesting. So if you want to do it on the shots, you obviously go to where the markers were on the original clip, where, where we shoot, click S, and then S in the next shot. And then here's a shot, so I'm going to add a flash here. You click this button here, Event FX, which should open it up if my computer doesn't crash. There we go. And it'll open up this. And for the flashes, you go to Sony Levels, you double click on it and click OK. So now it's up. And because you've split the clip at the start of the shot, you're going to click animate and here it's, it's already got the first keyframe selected you go forward like a tiny bit click and then you drag the input end down a bit and the lower it is the, the brighter the flash is going to be so I'm going to do it about, about 500 so now it goes from like no from like 1% from like a whole one to half so it's gone from no flash to like half brightness flash and then you go right to the end of the clip and drag it back up to 100. So now, if you look at it here in the preview screen, it flashed. So once you, you could do that with all the shots, but I'm not going to do it at the moment. I'm just going to show you something else. Um, the screen pump plus the flash is usually best for the last shot. So I'm going to split on the last shot where I've synced it to the biggest beat. And I'm going to go back into Sony Levels, click OK, animate, click forward. 
bring it down to about 300 this time, or maybe about 250. Go to the end and put it back up to 100, or back to 1. Now you've got a nice flash there. And now I'm going to click the 1 above the effect, so it's going to be event pan crop. And do the same where I click just forward a tiny bit down here, and then grab the corner. If you've got these two both selected, then it'll like zoom in the right way without just deforming it. So now I'm going to zoom it in a bit like this. And you can also rotate it a bit as well if you want, so I'm going to rotate it a bit. So now you've got this, so it goes from normal, full screen, to zoomed in, flash, zoomed in like rotated. And then you go to the end, again, and you right click the screen and click restore. So now we've got this. Let me just preview that. By the way, to preview, you highlight it and then you click shift B and it'll like do a quick RAM preview for you. It won't lag when you watch it back. So this is what it looks like. Well, that's one type of screen pump. If you go back into it and click on the keyframe where it's zoomed in, um, if I click restore so it's back to normal, if you unclick these two boxes here on the left and the side and then drag the top down and the bottom up, you can see on the screen now it's brought some black bars up and then if you click these two things again and then do the zoom in rotating now when we watch it back it'll look quite effective there you go and also this song got a lot of drum beats if you can hear it like between the shots you can hear it going brum so I'm just going to like show you how to add like black flashes or white flashes to sync with the beats, which looks pretty good. But this is going to take a lot of syncing or just rough guesswork of where the thing is. So if you scroll all the way in, you can see like there, 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 and there. The beats are higher. That means that's where the drum beats are going to be. So, so you zoom in, and when you find the beat, obviously you press M, like I told you last week, to find the shots. Just go through and mark all the shots. So there. And then what you can either do is you can either split it, or you should split it between where all the yellow lines, where all the orange markers are. And to do the black flashes, you simply go on the clip and put your arrow on the top of the clip. And you can see a hand appears that says opacity. You click on that and you drag it down so it's like that, like that comes across. And you do that every other clip like this. And now when you play it back, it'll be like this. Just preview it. Oh, not that famous bit. I'll put it on best and try and render it. As you can see there, the black screen flashes go nicely on the screen. And if you want to do it with white flashes, if I just turn this opacity back up on all these clips, you simply go into all of the clips, click on this, add the levels, and do that thing where I said where you put it a little bit in front, drag it down, and then drag it back to normal at the end. So that's what you do for the white flashes, but I prefer to use black flashes in hardcore edits because it looks nicer. So if we just add a few black flashes in there. I'm just going to do a few more, a different, few different flashes. Split it, drag the opacity down. Maybe a bit more. So now you've got. And then you can go in onto the shot again, split it where he shoots. Click on this, so many levels. Drag it down to about 400 this time. Click back to normal at the top. And that's basically it that's just how what kind of effects I add on that's how I swap between Vegas and Sony uh, Sony Vegas and After Effects so um, if you like this tutorial comment like and favorite why not subscribe as well
and leave a comment below of what tutorial you want next week and if it gets enough thumbs up then I'll obviously be doing that tutorial. Um, so yeah, thanks guys, peace out and see ya.